When Alice Phelps left home that day to go to her judo class, she told her husband Ralph to clean off the front walk before he left for work. Is that all right with you? But Ralph never did what his wife told him to do. When Ralph returned home, there was a body lying on his front stairs. It was the mailman. He had obviously slipped on the ice that Ralph hadn't cleaned away and broken his neck. Ralph, fearing the wrath of the letter carrier's union, carried the body into the house. He decided he would put the body into the trunk of his car and dump it somewhere before anyone noticed that the mailman was missing. A problem struck him. If the police investigated the disappearance of the mailman, there was a rather obvious clue. All the houses on the mailman's route preceding his own would have had a mail delivery that day. Those after his would not. Ralph wondered if he should turn himself in. He remembered that a mailman had once broken his leg on a friend's property, and that had cost the friend a lot of money. A broken neck was probably considered as bad as ten broken legs. Ralph poured himself a drink to steady his nerves. Then he undressed the mailman and leaving the mailman comfortably in a living room chair, put on the mailman's uniform and went out to deliver the mail. No one noticed that it was Ralph delivering the mail instead of the regular mailman. When he got home, he found that his key was still in his own pants, not in the mailman's pants. He tried to get in a window. He was spotted by some policeman in a passing police car. They accused him of trying to break into the house. Ralph claimed that it was his own house. The policemen were doubtful that a mailman could afford such a large house. Ralph remembered that there was a body in his living room and dropped the subject. As they were taking him away, a policeman told Ralph that he was a disgrace to the letter carrier's union. When Alice came home, she found that the window had been forced open. She found the mailman, the pile of clothing, and the open bottle. She'd had an affair with the mailman some months before. She'd broken off with him, but it seemed he had come back. He had broken into the house to see her. Hello? And not finding her, had drunk half a bottle of whiskey, ripped off his clothes, and fallen into a stupor. It was just like him, she thought. Fearing that Ralph would return soon and find him there, she dressed the mailman, put him in the car, drove to his apartment, carried him up the stairs, and put him to bed. She gave him a last kiss before leaving. For the first time, she noticed he wasn't breathing. And for the first time, another possibility occurred to her. Perhaps the mailman had been surprised by Ralph. No, 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 no. And Ralph had killed him. Perhaps Ralph was out buying a gun right at that moment to kill her, too. Alice drove away to another province and started a new life under the name Patricia.
Meanwhile, Ralph was being released from the police station. Letter Carriers Union, still under the misapprehension that Ralph was the regular letter carrier, had paid his bail. When he got home, he noticed the body had disappeared. He burned the mailman's uniform and resolved to forget the whole thing. When the trial date for the mailman arrived, he did not show up. The authorities went to the mailman's apartment and found that he had passed away in his bed. One of the policemen noticed that he looked different, but another said that was just because he was dead. The coroner was surprised to find that the mailman had died of a broken neck in bed. He surmised that the mailman, filled with remorse for his crime, had dreamed that he was being hanged. The resulting reflex of his neck muscles had snapped his neck. After a while, Ralph stopped worrying about the fact that his body had disappeared and that his wife had never come back. And in all the long and happy years that followed, Ralph never cleaned the walk.